This is good a USL game as you're going to find in the Eastern Conference. The Rowdies of Tampa Bay, perfect in their USL debut season. Louisville City, the old guard in the Eastern Conference, hoping to knock off the newcomers. We're underway in Louisville at Slugger Field as these two teams very much excited for the game at hand. Mike Watts with Matt Stubbington. And, and Matt, this is going to be attack-minded, and both coaches indicated we're going to see a lot of action around the goal mouths with the way this field is constructed. Well, that's a very tight field, as you can see. And again, with the lineups, 4-2-3-1 for both squads, there's going to be a, a, a lot of attack from both teams. Marcel Schaefer, a little bit of a push. As Louisville City in their blackout jerseys for this affair. That apparently didn't uh, cover the ball kids either. As an early foul gives the ball to Oscar Jimenez in a dangerous position for Louisville in this first minute. We'll see if Akira Fitzgerald is immediately put to the test. Jimenez. Punched away by Fitzgerald, all five foot nine or, or five foot eleven of them, depending on where you where you look. Well, he's listed on the roster at five foot eleven, and certainly a great test for the goalkeeper right at the beginning of the match. Davis turns and puts that off the ad board, so Fitzgerald avoids the early danger, no matter how tall he is. Well, he came out very nicely for that ball and headed it clear. Uh, fit, uh, used his hands to get the ball clear <laughs> very well there. Uh, punched the ball clear and kept the ball going in the direction that um, it was traveling, which was good technique from the goalkeeper. And you look at him, you're so used to seeing these goalkeepers these days, my, you know, six foot plus. You see somebody who's five foot 11, it really surprises you. And watching tape of him, it's, it was surprising to see his stature, but he came up big on that occasion there. Comes to Schaefer. Excellent German player, one of the studs for this rowdy squad. The back downfield by Morad. Comes to Bowden, and there's that contact in the center of the field. Player holding his head there, and uh, referee stopping play as you have to when there is a head injury involved. And that's Damian Lowe, the former Sounders man who started every game of the season, played every minute. Well, that's going to be a, a a big one for the Rowdies this early in the match, the central defender. Eighth overall pick in 2014 for the Sounders, a generation Adidas guy out of University of Hartford. 23-year-old Jamaican hailing from Kingston. He's being looked at now. Well, he's going to have to come out of the game for the stoppage. Training staff coming on to look at him, so going through the con concussion protocols right now. Goes in for the header and collision there right in the middle of the park. Instigated by low, nothing untoward by it. 50-50 ball and just commitment from both players there. And looks like Lowe's going to be okay. He's Suddenly got his bell rung there, Mike. That's right. He and Spencer uh, shaking it out. And it looks like the trainer says Lowe will likely be able to continue on as he heads over to the sideline. They checked him out right as it happened for a potential head injury. Let's get another look at, at Lowe here colliding with the big Luke Spencer. Oh, two big boys in the middle of the park. And it's a forehead of Lowe hitting the top of Spencer's head. 6-3 and 6-2, and they're not very wiry either. They're not. Big boys. Louisville City and Tampa Bay Rowdies early going. And when you look at this Louisville team, whether it's, it's Speedy Williams in the middle or uh, uh, Paolo Del Piccolo, they're going to look to try and, and keep this Tampa Bay Rowdies team at bay a little bit as you see Lowe come back. The first few weeks, there has not been a lot of options to slow this Rowdies team down. It's why this is such a big game for these two teams. And so the ball played right down center and knocked back by Kyle Smith. 
Well, your job as a holding midfielder, again, with both teams playing a 4-2-3-1, those two players have to switch off their roles, find a way to get the ball from their back line, and then distribute it forwards to start the offense. So Williams and Del Piccolo are very key in what Louisville want to be doing going forwards. Well, Revolsky in again for Greg Ranjit Singh, who did receive an injection this week, but not in the 18. It'll be interesting to see just how long it'll take for him to return to availability as Kyle Smith has that clipped away from him a bit further. It's a Georgie Hristoff, number 10 in yellow and green. Tampa Bay's golden man thus far. Three goals, two game winners. Brown turning it up the left-hand side. Joe Cole, how's that taken away from him? Gets out over the end line, and Joe Cole, who uh, Stuart Campbell thinks can still hold a job in the Premier League if he really felt like it, earns a corner for Tampa Bay. Well, great effort there from the veteran from the UK. And that just shows his commitment that Coach Campbell spoke to you and I about, Mike, and training and, and everything. He wants to lead the team, and moments like that can inspire your teammates to improve their performance. Michael Nanchoff. Backside of the six-yard box. Came down towards Schaefer. Played wide again. Nanchoff plays it low across the face of goal. Multiple could have been there. And now an injured player. It's Marcel Schaefer. He's rolling around on the ground, and play has to stop for Tampa Bay at a bit of an inopportune time. I'm surprised that the referee let play continue because the player, Nanchoff, he was holding his head. Schaefer, sorry, was holding his head there, Mike, and as the ball came in, play from behind and just a, you know, like an elbow for, forearm to the face there. And any time a player's hands go up to their, their head, the referee should be stopping play no matter where the ball is. Marcel Schaefer, best known for his uh, time at Wolfsburg, Bundesliga champion in 2009. And the guy who moved from the left wing into central midfield, that's what Tampa Bay wanted from him. And so far, he's done a very good job in that role, which is what you'd expect from a guy who's won a Bundesliga championship. A very experienced player. And again, that, the role in the central midfield is finding a way to get the ball and then distribute it. And he does that really, really well. Debuted with Germany in 2008. A handful of caps for them, 32 years old. And... Uh, Still trying to get that jaw about right. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay looked like they were on the attack there, and all of a sudden they're getting a, a free ball back to the goalkeeper. They were on the attack. Don't think the ball was going to fall kindly for them in the end, so I, I believe that Louisville would have been able to clear their, clear their lines, but Tampa Bay would like to keep the momentum and keep the possession in their attacking third and keep that pressure on the Louisville team. Fitzgerald lining it well down the field. Schaefer is back in the game at central midfield. Ball just did get over him. Lifted by a Cole. Looked like Brown was trying to chest that ball back to his supporting midfielders, but Schaefer coming back on the field was a little bit late to the scene, and Louisville were able to get possession back momentarily. Such a tight playing area. These players find it very difficult to get any consistent possession at the moment. Brown plays it into space. Out by Kyle Smith. This time they'll put it into space on the right side. Jimenez under pressure. Stepping to the end line. Long ball across. And that got out of play. So Louisville gets a goal kick in the ninth minute. I thought the pass forwards was a little bit ambitious at that moment in time. It looked like the ball could have been played more sim uh, simply to the right back area of the field, but the ball got through beautifully, but the cross in the end was a disappointing one. Bob Ravolsky kicks it away. Tenth minute. Twenty seven year old Oscar Jimenez tosses that in got out over the far touch line again and they are advancing by way of throw now. On the lineup that 
Both teams are employing the outside backs are key in getting forwards and Jimenez finding his way up into the attack in third now for Louisville. Back towards Brown. Williams. Here comes Ownby. Left hand side. Cutting back. Williams. Right footed low strike. That is off of Anil Collins. And that does just get out for a corner kick for Louisville City. Surprised the Rowdies let that one go without a chase to try and save it from going out for the corner kick. That took some kind of spin to get there, though, didn't it? It certainly did. A little bit of English there from Collins. He's Scottish. He is. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, there's plenty of contact in the box, and Oscar Jimenez pointing. This certainly has the makings of a uh, but a physical matchup. No love lost between the two teams so far. Lots of physical contact. Players down in the middle of the pitch. Stuart Campbell told us in terms of road games to start the USL season for them. They started with three at home. Couldn't ask for a tougher one than this. Well, certainly not. And then two versus three. Winner will be leading their division at the end of the week most likely. Menez goes short. Now McCabe plays it back. Second bite at the apple. That's dangerous service, but it just does loft over and out of play. A well worked free kick there. Just the service in the end from Jimenez. You see what he was trying to do. Stand it up at the far post, allowing the players to run in off of the second rotation from the corner kick. But the service just wasn't of the standard it needed to be. Fitzgerald came over from Carolina, spent six years there. A very brief stint with NYCFC, but never appeared. And they were an expansion team in 2015. And he may well just be keeping the seat warm for Matt Pickens, who's still working his way back from a preseason injury. Schaefer in close quarters. Christoph Brown. Up the left, and Christoff was the target. Wasn't going the same way. And, you know, Matt, people can't see in our booth. You're kind of pointing to the far side, but it just doesn't feel like there's a ton of room if you get it there. Well, with a, a, any point in the game of soccer, you have to switch the point of attack to unbalance the team that you're playing against. And particularly when the, the field is as tight as this, you have to find a way to do that quickly and often. And I thought there was an opportunity for the Rowdies to switch that point of attack. They chose not to. And then kept it tight on the left flank. And it looks like Fitzgerald is asking for a sub. Yeah, that'd be surprising here. Just uh, 13 minutes in. And Matt Pickens isn't quite 100% either, last we heard. And he's still down. So it looks indeed like Akira Fitzgerald is down injured. And Matt Pickens, who is yet to appear this year, is his likely replacement. He's the goalkeeper in the 18. That's a huge moment, and tactically, you're using a substitution that you would like to save for the second half on a, for an outfield player. You're You'd rather likely know. going to be using on, a, on your goalkeeper within 15 minutes of the first half starting. Yeah. He came out to collect the ball, and looked like he collided with Collins there. He immediately... And he knew something was wrong, and looks like the athletic trainer is working on the hamstring area. And, and obviously, we don't want to want to speculate all too much, but uh, you'd really rather know that he's got a tender hamstring or whatever injury it may be about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> well, certainly, I mean, if it's possible to change the direction of the big Collins coming in and making a collision with you. Something uh, tall back there, and and caused him the issue. So a little disappointing here for Akira Fitzgerald and this Tampa Bay Rowdies team who find themselves a bit behind the gun now in the 15th minute, assuming he is indeed on his way out of the contest. Well, it looks like he is. I mean, there's a little bit of a limp there on the, on the right leg. When he first got up, I thought he was moving pretty good, but uh, there's a, a little bit of a limp that developed. Pickens a wry smile as he looks across the field. 
Hoping that Fitzgerald can take his time walking to the sideline so he can have a few more catches before he goes out into the pitch. It's funny, we were talking about before the game, you always said you really didn't appreciate uh, training goalkeepers. You kind of have to hit the ball right to them when you warm them up. Make them feel good. That's what you're supposed to do. It's very <laughs> difficult when you're so used to trying to score on goalkeepers. <laughs> well, this is an unenviable position for Matt Pickens to come into. The 19th overall pick in the 2004 MLS Super Draft for Chicago out of Washington, Missouri. And uh, here he comes. Dealt with an injury in preseason, 35 years old. Played in MLS with the Colorado Rapids in Chicago. Now in his fourth season in Tampa. And he's placed into a uh, precarious position. Well, we spoke to Coach Campbell about the competition for the goalkeeper spot. And he said that the goalkeepers worked so hard together. And it's an unusual dichotomy because you're trying to beat out your the other goalkeeper from the position at the same time they have a lot of love and a lot of support from each other for each other and you saw that as Fitzgerald made his way to the bench and the goalkeepers exchanged a, a hug and a high five and Fitzgerald wants Pickens to do well Pickens wants Fitzgerald to do well neither of them want their teammate to be hurt so in the end as much as they want to play they also want the Rowdies to be successful and as long as the goalkeeper isn't letting anything go by him into the back of the net the Rowdies should be Piccolo putting his head to it. Spencer, that's a creative touch. Ownby going back to Davis. Give and go. Ownby chasing. Pressure still coming from Spencer and Pickens. That first touch sometimes is the most valuable. And it wasn't the best clearance from Pickens, but it got the ball out of the danger area momentarily. I thought Tampa Bay were in good shape defensively, but they didn't follow the runner on the give and go. And frankly, they were very fortunate that the ball didn't find its way back out to Ombi on the right flank. Speaking of unfortunate and Ombi, he uh, really did a bit of a cartwheel there and took the entire defensive uh, alignment with him. Eighteenth minute between Louisville City and Tampa Bay Rowdies. First meeting between these two sides in a competitive match. Tampa Bay's first uh, year in the USL, one of the more historic names in American soccer. Spencer Williams looking for Ownby. Jimenez, Del Piccolo, Morad. Ball is not spending a lot of time in the middle third from either team. I'm watching the game last week or against, um, it was last week that Tampa Bay were playing and the coach Campbell was asking for his team at halftime to be a lot more patient in their build up and they were so. Came out with a one nothing victory but times in this first half, the early going, they've looked for that early long ball forwards and I think that's going against what Coach Campbell was expecting. What a terrific pass. Restoff puts it over. Well, sometimes you go for the long ball and, it, and it's uh, right on the point. But Kristoff couldn't put it in. Well, the build up was a lot more patient. And then the moment opened up for the ball over the top diagonally. And you see the player looking up there, Nanchoff. Seeing Ristoff open on the left flank, good control, but the finish in the end wasn't of the quality of everything that went before it. Just leaning back slightly as he struck the ball was Ristoff. He seemed to want to come down to him in a timely fashion. But really, that all came from a more patient build-up from Tampa Bay, and that allowed them to unbalance Louisville and then get the ball over the top diagonally to the weak side. Davis, Spencer... Able to catch his man out. Now they play it wide. Own a couple of options low, but the flag was up. Play comes back. Too many touches on the ball before the ball got played out to Own B and just drifted off sides. Good job from the back line of the Rowdies to step up and catch the left winger out. 
Well, and, and you mentioned patience, and, and he, he was quoted this week saying that they got sucked into the Ottawa style of trying to play long. Underratedly, this is a Tampa team that in three home games had 500 more successful passes than their opposition. 130 plus difference a game. It's remarkable. 150 plus. Driving towards the end line, and uh, that just does get out. Well shielded by Williams. The hands in the back there, free kick given, I think. Manchoff just got high on the defender and shoved him in the back. It would be six of one, half a dozen of the other if that's the way it goes, and, and you're right. That's, I think, exactly six yards off the end line. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice header by Spencer. Question is whether or not they can make something of it. A little hampered there. McCabe. He's just coming back from injury. He doesn't want to be going out of the game. Just a little tweak of the ankle. I'm sure it'll be all right. There's Darnell King. He is a Tampa native. Switch sides in the Florida Derby a couple of years ago and still trying to refine that form that made him an all league pick way back in 2014. Ownby looking for Spencer. He turns, lays it back. Davis, left footed strike, he puts it in. Louisville City takes the lead. George Davis has scored in his fourth game running. Great work down the left flank. Ombi with the ball. Gets the ball into Spencer. Spencer with great patience and presence of mind. Just drops the ball back to the trailing Davis. Good strength on the ball by Spencer. Lovely touch to the left. And then the left footed shot behind Pickens for the goal. Lovely well worked goal from Louisville there. Get the ball out wide. Put it into your big center forward. Let him do something magical and he did so finding Davis the fourth trailing the play. Davis is fourth of the season. What a remarkable year he's had so far in that move back to central midfield. Goal is a Kentucky lottery goal and it comes in the 22nd minute. And that's his eighth shot of the year. All eight have been on target. Oh, it's fantastic the way he's playing and it, the players have in front of him are just sucking the back line deep into the defensive penalty area and then he just pops up at the top of the box for his drop passes and is finding the way to put them on target make the goalkeeper work or in this case find a way to get past the goalkeeper on B that comes down it's, it's a gracious fall for uh, Spencer tax still on for Louisville City in their blackout jerseys which are looking spiffy at the moment There's Tosh. He's held on to his starting job despite the fact Sean Reynolds and Paco Craig are back from early season suspensions carrying over from last year. And this goal in the 22nd minute is all about poise. It was. It was good play there by Spencer. Getting the pass from Ombi, keeping his presence of mind, sucking the players in, turning on it, and then knowing where Davis the fourth was waiting at the top of the box. And then he just had the presence of mind to take it to his left and then slot it in the back of the net. A well-worked goal all round for those three players involved. Is that generational reference, the fourth, or his fourth goal of the year? Well, it goes with both at the moment. So. Yes. Next time in the graphic, we need to write down that it's his IV goal. <laughs> <laughs> back towards Spencer, and uh, eventually kicked away by Pickens. Oh. Got a wonderful crew on this game here. Tom Pirro, Alex Goldstein. Joining us, Mike Watts. And yeah, Matt Stubbington. Well, we were talking pregame whether we had to mention that he was the fourth, but maybe we should just mention him as the fourth at the moment. That's right. Kristoff. He's looking for a, a fourth goal in four games running, too. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how the Rowdies respond. Cause that's the first goal they've conceded this season. Mm -hmm. So first time they've had to play from behind. How do they respond? Have they got the answer? that they need to find to maintain their position at the top of the division. They beat a playoff team in Orlando City B, the eighth seed last year, one nothing to start in the I-5 derby. There's pressure coming from Brown. 
It was a turn at just the nick of time. Then they blew out Toronto, who made a ton of defensive changes, and then a win over Ottawa, a team that was at the bottom of their league last year. This is really their best competition yet as Ownby plays through looking for Davis again. Davis turns, trying to keep it in front of him. Now for a throw, Lou City fans appreciative. Thought there'd be some support on the right flank, just wasn't coming for Ownby to play the ball out wide, and then Ownby running into the space where he put the pass, brought defenders into that area and just closed anything down that Louisville had going forward at that moment. Smith, that's creative touch from Ownby. Spencer spins out. A step over from Bowden. Davis still pressuring. Cole able to keep it. There's Joe Cole again. What can't you say about his terrific career? Well, that's the first time we've called his name really in the first 25 minutes, and we're doing so in his defensive third. That is not where Coach Campbell wants him touching the ball. And uh, I looked at it yesterday. Opta saying that 91% of his passes in the opposition half are successful. Remarkable from Joe Cole. Here's Spencer. Through ball. Ombi running after it. Pickens takes it over. The tracking run there by Collins. Make sure that nobody from Louisville was going to get on the end of that pass. Goalkeeper out smartly. B nearly was off to the races. Schaefer. Now he widens the play. Bowden spends a lot more time in this half than he has so far tonight. Schaefer. Here's Vingard, the Dane. Came in mid-season last year. Kicked away from Cole. Just looking at the route he's playing, it feels to me like they just need to up the rhythm a little bit. A lot of the passes, they're taking an extra touch on that they don't necessarily need or an extra short pass when they could have switched the point of attack more directly. Spoiling things going forwards. I don't think they're seeing the game quite as well as they should at this point in the match. It's something that they'll probably address as this goes forwards. Comes down to wrist off, taken off his foot by Tosh. They've done well so far, settling down Cole and Bristoff. Spencer into space again. He's got Davis moving into the box. Now he lifts it, looking for Davis opposite post. Pickens needed all six foot three to reach out and keep that. Huge save from Pickens. It wasn't particularly spectacular, but he had to have good footwork going to his left. There were five Tampa Bay Rowdies around Spencer, and he's still got the cross off. They have to do a better job defensively, otherwise they're going to be really up against it. And you say not spectacular, but he doesn't catch that ball. It's 2 nothing. Absolutely. And Davis there was just lurking at the back post. Popping up the diagonal run into that area. It was fantastic movement from the center uh, midfielder. Beg your pardon, Davis, uh, his third goal of the year, that scoreless draw to open against St. Louis. He scored against uh, two of his former teams in... Uh, Two of his former teams in Orlando City B and Richmond. So three goals on the season for him, one off the uh, league lead. I don't know, Louisville fans will be hoping that he does get that fourth. So we can go back to calling him George Davis the fourth. There we go. That's right. Schaefer, not enough under it. McCabe. Knocks it back. It's Williams. Jimenez did really well with that clearing header to pass it to McCabe. In between them, they're able to switch the point of attack to the right flank now. Long again, Spencer. Flag has stayed down. That lined off of the uh, corner flag. Go for Damian Lowe. Good to see him in the game after that previous knock. 
So King was going for a walk there, and referee's asking him to retreat to back to where the ball went out of play. Always like it when that happens because the players then take another four or five steps in the <laughs> action of throwing the ball in, so they, they end up where the referee told them to stop going to in the, in the end. This is a perfect pass to Ristoff, who falls down, and the foul given. Morad was in the area, and Ristoff wins a good free kick opportunity for Tampa Bay. Ristoff's arguing that there was a goal scoring opportunity and that a card should be forthcoming in this situation. Should only be yellow. And there it is. Yeah. Yellow card to George Davis. So he is an assist away from the old Gordie Howe hat trick. And Davis fourth coming back defensively. Great job there. Just a little tug of the right shoulder of Ristoff. Put the player to the ground. Wiley player as Ristoff knew that the contact was coming. And it's on a different surface. That's right where the surface changes. Now, it's good work from Davis to get back defensively. He had players around him, didn't need to make the contact. But Ristoff just very smart tactically there, knew what was happening, felt the touch, and went down. And uh, perhaps Davis a little bit unlucky to get the yellow card, in my opinion. But. He's in the referee book, and this is a great opportunity for the Rowdies. Joe Cole. Cole lines that into the wall. McCabe goes to collect it. Lofted towards the 18 again, headed down. Del Piccolo can't take it back. Instead, Schaefer up the wing by Bowden. Kristoff, Schaefer slides it to the top. Kicked out by Williams. So important for those center midfielders to track the runs, and Williams did a great job there filling the box and making sure that nobody from Tampa Bay were going to get on the end of that cross ball. Ownby. There he goes, past Vingard. Ownby turns. And now Smith takes it back. He just didn't have any options there. Uh, there wasn't a lot of players in the box, but felt like he could have crossed it with his right peg, but maybe he doesn't trust that side of his body to make an accurate ball. Certainly a good opportunity on the counterattack. Collins. First time playing outside of the UK. Cuts across the grain and finds Vingard. Up the right hand side. Cole. Cuts towards the end line again. Gets the service off of Williams. But this is played right into a dangerous position. The turn from Brown setting up a blast. That's off to the upper deck. A lot of it with communication problems there. Brown wanting to collect the ball, and his teammate was there to have the shot. But fantastic run to the right flank by Joe Cole there. The movement was spectacular, and that opened up that opportunity for the Rowdies. Clearance from the goalkeeper. And a little fortunate not to have that ball coming straight back at him in short order there for Dobrovalski. Jimenez nutmegs the uh, oncoming attacker, Williams. Louisville City moving the wrong way at the moment. Del Piccolo trying to change that narrative. Spencer. He's done a really good job of holding up play. Down goes Ownbees looking for a whistle, and now it comes. That should well move the Rowdies out of Louisville territory on the whole. Tangle of feet there. Don't be going to ground. Referee blowing for the foul. Tampa Bay have been a little bit more patient in their attack. 
in his last few minutes and have had more of the run of play with that possession that they have been enjoying. But Louisville look oh so dangerous on the counter. Oscar Jimenez. Right back out by Ondi. Cole. Up the line, out for a throw. Hey, fans, stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast, Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Sirius XM FC will air the USL Game of the Week. Check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. This ball comes in towards Ondi. The flag was up for offside. And we hope to have Joe Cole with us this week. That's still uh, being worked out at this, uh, this final moment. As the team will not be traveling back to Tampa Bay after this affair. They're going to stay up for Wednesday night's game against FC Cincinnati at Nippert Stadium. That game will be the ESPN3 Sirius XM FC game of the week. You think forward to uh, what FC Cincinnati has coming their way. And uh, it's both of these teams in the next week's worth of time. It's a really tough schedule that they have ahead of them. Three consecutive undefeated teams, at least at this particular juncture. Again, Tampa Bay are going for that long diagonal ball across like that. And it's going to make it easy for Louisville to defend that if that's what the Rowdies keep going back to. The outside back and, um, on the left-hand side was open for a shorter pass, and that would have been perhaps a better selection as far as a way to switch the point of attack. But again, the Rowdies going for that long diagonal ball, trying to find their way to the weak side more quickly. The frustration there, you can see if Schaefer's face is just very frustrated with the way things are going right now for the Rowdies. 22nd minute goal from number 22, third of the year for George Davis the fourth. Ball bounds down towards McCabe. And that was touched by a Rowdy. How about another corner for Louisville City? Wasn't dealt with at all well by the Rowdies. The ball seemed to stay in the air for an age. I didn't think it was the best service in the world for Louisville, but they won't care. They got another set piece out of it. Jimenez in that short corner area. McCabe plays it back. This time Jimenez gets the cross in, left it short. Almost looks like they have to play that short corner because he doesn't have enough run up to get the ball in to the box because of the, uh, the outfield fence right there. Of course, maybe you'd want a left footed player to play an out swinger, but if, if you want that in swinging ball, you're going to have to have a, a player right up against it. So again, is unusual because Jimenez plays as a left back for Louisville, so you'd think he'd have a left back to swing that ball in with the out swinger. However, from my own standpoint as a coach, I always like to play the in-swinger. It makes it a little bit more difficult for the goalkeeper because you can play it away from the keeper and allow your players to run onto it. Ball play forward by the Rowdies. Joe Cole was in an offside position, couldn't make any play on the ball. And Morad unable to keep it in for Louisville City. So Tampa Bay trying to move upfield in the 39th minute, maybe level this game out before the half. Again, Tampa Bay, they're short-siding themselves, keeping it on the strong side. They've got to find a way to switch the point of attack. Great atmosphere here tonight in Louisville. Tampa. And, uh, Tampa Bay has really had a tremendous surge of support since joining the league this year as well out at, at Al Lang Stadium. Anything over 7,700 for the I-4 Derby uh, to Orlando City B early on. And 
seen Bowden really get the, the attacking third at all so far this first half. I don't remember him serving a ball at all from anywhere on the field trying no. to get into the box. We spoke with James O'Connor this week. He said they're absolutely crucial that they use Luke Bowden the right way. And so far, it doesn't seem like they've been able to do that. Schaefer gets it back. Williams was hounding him. Vingard going out for King. McCabe and King want the ball. O'Connor's a bit disappointed by it all. Well, Williams and Del Piccolo have done a really good job of making sure that their counterparts of Vingard and Schaefer aren't able to find a way to switch the point of attack for the Rowdies. Just two to holding midfielders for Louisville have really done a good job of controlling things in the center of the park. See James O'Connor and Stuart Campbell there. Played with each other, played against each other. <laughs> and, uh, certainly plenty of respect between the two head coaches. Let's see O'Connor there. He's pointing one way or another. Won't be uh, coming after the ball. And won't be guilty of the foul. A little late, a little behind the tackle. That's Stuart Campbell, 39 years old. This is his second full season as head coach, but he went from player to assistant to the head man here. Over 500 professional appearances in total, finishing his uh, playing career in 2013 in Tampa Bay. Had a really good conversation with him this week about those clean sheets. They obviously concede for the first time thus far. He's up off his bench now. But he said it takes a little bit of luck to, to get a clean sheet, then to score, and then to pick up three points. It's not easy. It isn't. And when you're playing in a league that's as competitive as the USL, it isn't easy. And you look at the game against Ottawa, Ottawa if Fitzgerald hadn't played as well in the first half as he did, Tampa Bay would have conceded a goal in the first 45 minutes last week. And then who knows how the rest of it plays out. Uh, Ristoff scored in the 47th, beating former RGV keeper Callum Irving, and the uh, rest of that, they say, is history. Well, Davis was fouled. He's going to set the ball down, and uh, it turns out the entire Louisville City team wants to strike this. Well, from the position on the park, it would favor a right-footed shot, I would believe. Davis certainly looks the favorite. Oh, there's a little bit of frustration on now. Everybody's throwing their toys at the moment. <laughs> and yet Brown still won't move. <laughs> so now the question is how hard Davis is willing to kick that toy to uh, make his point clear. Well, it's interesting. I mean, technically, the referee would be within his right to give a yellow card to both players for unsportsmanlike conduct. Turns out it looks like neither got one. Which is just as well for Louisville fans because Davis is sitting on that yellow. Pickens is just trying to set his own wall. <laughs> I think we're going to be playing a little bit more than 45 minutes in this first half with the time it's taken to set this free kick. That wall is not back 10 yards. No. And another player from the Rowdies goes down. In the box, no call from the ref, and after all that, the free kick went straight into the <laughs> wall. <laughs> well, if it were a full 10 yards back, who knows? Their service, Jimenez, and it's over the bar from Tosh. Nearly his first goal as a member of Louisville City. Just did put it over. Great movement in the box by Tosh, popping up at the far post. Would love to have that one back, put it on frame. Good right footed in swing of service from the left flank. Tosh, one of those guys with USL championship experience. He won it in 2015 with the Rochester Rhinos. And uh, to your point, the you know, referee down there is, is setting up uh, four minutes of stoppage time. <laughs> you might as well just start the second. This over the top, Spencer lets it bounce down. Spencer to his left, he strikes, oh, he just put it over. 
Spencer backflipped last time he scored. If he had put that in, who knows what he would have done. Well, lovely work by Spencer. Strong on the ball. A little bit of a Cruyff there. Onto the left foot. Tries to swing it in at the far post. Pickens diving to his right. He'll be thankful that that one didn't come on target. Lots of power, just not quite the accuracy. And we're seeing good things from Spencer. Not only is he holding up play, but he's been so poised around the box so far tonight, hasn't he? He certainly has. He's a good, strong player on the board, as you say, and does a fantastic job holding things up. Had to come in against Orlando when Lancaster went down with a hamstring injury after scoring the opening goal. Mm -hmm. Took Spencer a little while to get on the score sheet himself in that match, but he did do so. And it was so well deserved. That was his first goal in three plus years. Kristoff kept off the ball by Smith, but the attack not over yet. Schaefer. And this uh, bit on the impatient side is that's driven towards the corner. It actually puts Louisville in a tough spot. Low there with a bit of a Gary Owens up and under. Just clearing it, trying to beat the player to the ball on the 50-50. And he said, puts Louisville right in their defensive third and aren't able to clear the lines. And the Rowdies get the ball back on the throw-in. Four minutes of first half stoppage time between these two teams. Louisville City up 1-0, 22nd minute. Here comes King, a drive! Knocked down by Dolber Volsky. And cleared out. A spectacular right-footed shot there. It seemed like it was pretty close to the goalkeeper. Dobrovelski, though, was scrambling because it looked like the ball knuckled in the air. No spin on that ball. The goalkeeper did very well to concentrate on that one, Mike, and make sure that it went out of the danger area. And Al King with the shot. Absolutely no spin on the ball. Knuckled as it came in. He was a striker at FAU. Meanwhile, Nanshoff... Headed back in, falls towards Schaefer. They're looking for a handball, and uh, it'll belong to Louisville City. Bit unlucky, because if Schaefer did indeed get to take that shot, it looked like he would have had an opening. I actually thought the ball came up and hit Schaefer on the hand, and I think the referee was actually calling for an earlier infringement in the box. Mm -hmm. well, no matter what, from the Rowdy's perspective, it's all for naught. And a spectacular effort from King and the ensuing corner kick. All right. Ball goes by the bye. That's right. First half stoppage time here. Still have a little more time to go. Could there be a goal before this thing is over for the first half? Ball sliced across. Everyone's trying to get a goal of the year candidate in now. Steven Dos Santos nailing one from midfield earlier today. The bicycle kick goal by Miguel Gonzalez on Tuesday night. Both teams firing from distance thus far. King, that deflects, and a corner to Tampa Bay in the final minute of first half stoppage time. Good movement from Joe Cole again. Open things up on the left flank and isolated the player trying to get into the box. Wasn't able to do so. Good defensive presence by Louisville and Kyle Smith. And then switching the point of attack and trying to get into the box. On the right-hand side was Darnell King. Wins a corner kick for the Rowdies. Play comes back. I mean, look again. This should be a left-footed cross. But uh, again, it's a little tight in those quarters. A little tight. And Joe Cole and Jimenez coming together in the box. Getting a little talking to from the referee. Yeah, I'm sure that'll carry a ton of weight. Right in front of the Coopers, too. Tough place to play. In swinger. Spencer wins it. Final seconds of this opening half. Played in by Vingard. Service again. Punched out by Dobrovolsky. Setting up a volley. That's deflected back. Contact. And a foul for Tampa Bay right before halftime. But Schaefer went for the volley out of the air. Would have been a spectacular effort. And Spencer in late on the challenge. And referee indicating that he wait for the whistle. No card, I don't think. We're going to play like six minutes of stoppage time at this rate. Well, there is a card coming for Spencer. Foot up. And that 
hurts. I can tell you that now. And I... <laughs> uh, who? Because to me, that, that looks painful for both. Kick in the bottom of another player's uh, foot is not fun in any way, shape, or form, especially when you're going in for a full-blooded volley, as Schaefer was. That was going to definitely leave a mark. And the referee did, in fact, give Spencer a yellow card for that. And stud showing as he came in for the challenge, so I'd say that's probably a justified yellow. Second yellow of the game, the other to Davis. We'll see. <laughs> Joe Cole lined the last one into the wall. But this... Almost too close. There should be enough distance there for him to get the ball up and over and down again. Goalkeeper's off his line a little bit. Expecting to see him a little bit closer to the goal line in this situation. Again, a poor effort on the uh, free kick, though, from Joe Cole. Half time. Well, that was an interesting first 45, wasn't it, Matt? <laughs> Closer to 50. <laughs> yeah, it, it certainly was. Lots of action. It was a, a difficult game for either team to get into to start off with. But once they did, it was a, a really exciting match. 45-plus minutes gone here in Louisville. And it's a 1-0 lead for the home side. Tampa concedes for the first time. In the 22nd minute, George Davis scores in his third game running, his third goal of the year, one off the league lead. The Coopers have a lot to be pleased with. We will take a look at highlights, stats, and Louisville City Stadium announcing when we come back. Hi, it's Jan from Toyota. Things are changing quickly in your area. Here's how your local Toyota dealers can help you now. We want to let you know that we're thinking of all of you during these challenging times. Our service centers are open for you to make sure your Toyota is running safe, strong, and reliable. We have available 90-day deferred payments, Toyota Safety Sense standard, and low APR financing and leases. So remember, we're here for you. Contact your local Toyota dealer to see how they can help. Toyota. To our Kroger associates, for the long hours and late nights, for the miles traveled and the shelves restocked, for making a difference in our customers' lives, for doing so much more than your job. Everyone at the Kroger family of brands and our customers say thank you. In a time when daily life feels a bit uncertain, your hard work is keeping America fed. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Front loader odor, you know that smell when you open your funky front load washer? But at GE Appliances, we've engineered the first and only front load with an ultra-fresh vent system with odor block. Equipped with vents that help keep it dry and antimicrobial technology that protects against bacteria. Basically, funky to fresh. So you can shut the front door. No one says that. Another way we make good things for life. No. Since 1923, Cosair Charities has shown children their potential instead of their obstacles. So they see the world as a place of possibility where great things can take flight. When you support Cosair Charities, you help elevate every aspect of a child's life. Together, our kids, an entire community can reach new heights. There's so much more to do. Join us by donating today. Trying to topple Louisville City at a park where they've lost just five times in the last three years. Tampa Bay looking to extend a three-game winning streak to start their USL run. They've got certainly some work to do in the second half, trailing a goal to nil. Matt Pickens moving into the lineup with the injury to Akira Fitzgerald in the opening 20 minutes. Beaten in the 22nd minute by George Davis, who's off on a torrid run in league play. Marcel Schaefer injured in the first half, but back on the field. And Luke Bowden, last week USL Team of the Week, trying to find his way into a more attack-minded half. Louisville Slugger Field, the site of perhaps the most intriguing match in USL this week. And we're on to the second half of play. Immediately a long ball forwards by Tampa Bay. They weren't able to get the first or second win on the possession. 
Interesting to see what the message was from the coaching staff for the Rowdies at halftime, where they look for more confident uh, possession, more patient possession from the team. And we may get a better look at that now, depending on how Matt Pickens decides to play this. And there, there, there might be your answer, Matt. Not looking short. And then they go long. And then they go long. <laughs> Well, it's not a bad option. You go short, try and pull the defense out, and then spread the field spreads out a little bit. Long run for Ombi, still coming. And uh, Neil Collins is there initially. Ombi service looking for Spencer, knotted out. Lifted further by Nanshoff. Brown was tugged. Attack still on for Nanshoff. He's fouled. Speedy Williams didn't like the call. Good defensive play by Lowe to head the ball clear and allow the Rowdy to start the counterattack. And Collins will be a little bit disappointed with his initial clearance. Didn't go out for a throw in. And then you see the foul on Williams. That was a good call by the ref. He was a little bit behind Nanchoff as he went in for the tackle. Nanchoff out of Walsh Jesuit High School near Akron. Went to college in Akron. Eventually played for his former coach from Akron and uh, Caleb Porter in Portland. Ball over the top, header mixed over the bar. Man, that could have been better from Neil Collins. Surprised he went gold with that one. He had players coming in on the far sideline, or the far post, sorry. Would have been better served to serve the ball back across the box. Perhaps that's what he was trying to do, but the big guy just couldn't get it where he was intending. Dobrovolsky making the save he needed to make in the first half, but not much more really necessitated from him. Spencer, such good control for such a big guy, plays it in towards McCabe. Williams. Here's McCabe. Taken away. Those are the passes that will drive you nuts as a coach. Lowe steps in so beautifully to win the pass and then gives it straight back to Louisville. Morad being chased by Brown. Sean Brown, not too long ago, was the future of the Colorado Rapids organization. Went to Europe and sort of lost his touch. A quick restart. Although uh, the official doesn't seem all that keen to give it to him. Now the ball was put down probably about 10 yards away from where the foul happened. So referee coming back saying, well, take it back from where I blew the whistle, please. And Manchop wanted to take it quick again, but the referee wasn't ready. He's trotting into his position now. Everything's going to have to wait for him to blow the whistle again. Nanshoff lifts it. Comes down. Hit by Vingard. Vingard trying to switch to the other side. Not great clearance from Williams. Sliding challenge away from Ownby, and Davis gets a throw. We're nearing uh, the number of minutes we had on the clock when the first half stoppage finally ended. <laughs> 50th minute. Uh, well, it did. I was watching it. I was surprised it went to 50. And <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that, and certainly not in a long time, the first half lasting 50 minutes. <laughs> and yet I don't think anyone walked away with that saying, no, I think there should have been less time. I think it was about right. Uh, this is certainly nothing boring about the first 45-plus minutes. First 51 minutes, as it might be. Dickens. Gets it back from Damian Lull. Plays Brown. The Piccolo takes a tumble. Louisville City comes away with possession. McCabe. Flag staying down for Spencer. There it is. <laughs> they made him run the whole distance, and I think that's Spencer's point right now. Well, the way the rule is written is that you have to wait until the player that is in offside position to determine whether he's involved in the play. So if Spencer doesn't go for that ball, then he's not in an offside position. Brown still coming, and there's Dr. Volsky. 
Yeah, but he was the only one going for it. I know. And, and yeah, is it the difference between a, a throw in and a. Is that what they're looking for? Well, if he hadn't let the ball, if he'd let the ball go out for the throw in, he, he wouldn't have been called for the, the offside. And it's very frustrating for a player and from a fan's perspective because the player has just sprinted 15, 20 yards plus to try and win the ball and then gets the free kick called on him. He's like, <laughs> Seriously, guys? Could you not have done that? Well, I've done my fitness work this week. I don't need to do it in the game as well. Yeah, they didn't. Uh, they weren't so kind to him that time around. Del Piccolo. Tosh. Smith. To Davis. Comes to Vingard. Del Piccolo. In guard, Johnny on the spot again, and now low. Manshoff. King racing onto it, showing off the speed. Pet peeve of mine is King getting into a situation like that, and it's not just King, it's any player getting into a situation like that. You done the hard work you've isolated yourself 1v1 against the outside back have the courage in your attacking third to have a go try and beat that player 1v1 the worst thing that's going to happen is you'll end up with a goal kick against you or possibly you might even win a corner kick that's the area of the field to take the risk and this is uh, offside and, and they whistle it of course after the run mid wrist off do the extra sprint Got to be even handed. Got to be even handed. That's right. Obravowski making sure that he puts the ball in the right position. Thumbs up to the official on the near sideline. He needs to work on his distribution as a goalkeeper. He's not been a very good effort so far this match. A lot of his clearances off the turf have been low and, and scuffed. To his right. Native of uh, Illinois who played at Loyola, Chicago. He's still kind of getting his feet wet at the USL level because Ranjit Singh was really the man expected to start. He got injured right before halftime in the opener. Spencer, space now for McCabe. McCabe cuts back, he shoots. Deflected by Lowell. Pulled in by Pickens. Might have been better served to take that onto his left and have a shot into the near post area. Just took too many touches, allowed the Tampa Bay team to get back defensively. Good shape by the back line of the Rowdies. To close down the space from McCabe. In the end, deflected up and easily claimed by the goalkeeper Pickens. And we spoke this week with, with Stu Campbell and he said, you know, we were put under a lot of pressure by Ottawa physically, but defended absolutely fantastically. They're hard to break down because Lowe is in perfect position to block that shot. Everybody got back. And that's the key with a defensive unit. You have to get back together as a unit, communicate with each other. And that way you can trust each other and know that you, the back line have got each other's back. I think McCabe, though, I mean, he took way too many touches in the box, allowed that to happen. Maybe a player returning from injury as he has just doesn't have quite the confidence that he is used to having. Really put a swing in that. Put a swing on it. Yep. He stayed in the offseason this year as he had hip surgery. Now he's finally healthy enough to start. One would think he won't go the full 90. Ballard will find his way in off the bench, which is terrifying for opponents. He may be the, the 12th man for this group right now, the way he's played. The first month of the season. Spencer trying to hold it down, the former Xavier University man. And the Rowdies struggling to find ways to switch the point of attack. Beautiful control there by Bowden. And he didn't find anything into the center of the park to release the pressure on that left flank. Ends up giving up possession on the throw-in to Louisville. 
Pickens holding on to that for a while. And not to be forgotten, he's not totally healthy either, Matt Pickens. No, he's recovering from injury. He's done pretty well. He's made a couple of saves in the first half. Hasn't looked out of place. Played down the center, Nanshoff. Diagonal ball picked off, and there's Damian Lowe. He somersaulted at midfield. Heft on that ball from the goalkeeper, but still pulling that ball to his right. He ran all the way across his penalty box to the right side. He, he needs to stay on the left to <laughs> give himself some more room. McCabe, through ball, Spencer, Pickens. Manshoff. Impressed at the outside back position, playing against Stu Campbell in the U.S. Open Cup game. Henshaw collides with Del Piccolo and, and no whistle there. Uh, right call by the official, no call. Manchoff just ran into Del Piccolo. Beautiful change of direction by Manchoff to find his way open on the right-hand flank. And uh, that's descent for Luke Bowden. Talked his way into the book, did Bowden on that one. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to know when to be quiet. And so that was a hard foul. Coming in and putting Davis the fourth to the ground. I think he probably would have been in the book anyway, coming in from behind like that was Bowden, but certainly didn't help his case by keeping the, the chin wagging in a negative way to the official. Bowden very technically once played for this organization in, in Louisville. It's just before they moved here, their previous iteration is Orlando City with James O'Connor. Goes into the book in the 58th minute. Guy who James O'Connor said really could be playing at the highest level in this country, and Stuart Campbell echoed that sentiment. Sometimes you look at Tampa Bay Rowdies, and it's a bit of an embarrassment of riches. Brown gets by Tosh. Had a runner up the left-hand side, just didn't see him. Sometimes that close control, your head goes down, looking at the ball at your feet. You don't see what's going on around you. Looked like Ristoff was open on that left flank, sprinting into the attacking third. Paolo Del Piccolo. Spencer. Both overran the ball. At this point, Neil Collins playing cat and mouse. Collins did beautifully there. Lots of pressure from Spencer. Collins kept his head about him. Turned around the ball a couple of times and found a way to find a teammate. Something we've seen with the Rowdies so far, though, Mike, in this second half is that ball forwards from the back line hasn't always been clean and successful and has allowed Louisville to get possession back cheaply in the middle part of the pitch. Williams. El Piccolo. Well, now here's a little space for Jimenez. Jimenez plays it up the left-hand side. McCabe is looking at all that space. <laughs> yep, he's got his arms out. He's out wide open. Pass it to me. That's right. Ombi, I have to say, though, didn't do him any favors because he ran into that area of the park, took low with him, and the run distracted the pass from Jimenez a little bit. Ombi going to the bench early today. Cameron Lancaster, his first appearance since scoring against Orlando City B in the ninth minute. He was out before the half hour mark. And we thought Ombi would play a bigger role today. Ultimately, that wasn't the way the game ended up being played. It was more down the center of the field and the wings have kind of been kept rather quiet. I think it's the nature of the park a little bit. It's being so narrow and you're right, he hasn't been as influential as we had hoped. As we had hoped, thought. And same for Bowden on the other side. And it's a lot of pressure on these players, you know, to perform week in, week out. And you have a good week or a good opening to the season, and 
the opposition starts putting your name on the scouting roster report first and it becomes more difficult for you to get the space that you were used to having at the beginning of the season so it's a mark of a good player that they're able to find a way to still be successful even though they're garnering a lot more attention than they had at the beginning of the year Darnell King guilty party King there helping uh, the Louisville City man up. Joe Cole finding his way in the middle of this heated discussion. Vingard still making his point. Vingard will be on his way out momentarily too. What did you see there? Well, it looked like McKay was just trying to control the ball, wasn't able to do so, and then the challenge came in from behind and rolled his ankle a little bit. Well, how about this? Dobrovolsky all the way to the left now for this impending goal. If he puts this out on the free kick, then then if he puts this to the right, I'm done. I got nothing left. That's straight down the fairway. It was straight down the fairway. If he was able to put that one out on the right flank, I think there'd have been some teams uh, signing him up to. Oh, Lancaster. Going straight down, going right onto his back and leaning right onto his arm. And boy, that's not the pain. Someone who went down easy either. Just came into the game after dealing with an injury against OCB. And boy, he does not look any better for the wear. Trying to see where the actual challenge happened. Here it comes here. trying to see what actually happened there. He just kind of rolled up on himself. You didn't see anything uh, peculiar. I mean, obviously he's in a lot of pain. Maybe a stinger on the elbow or a little bit higher, but he's got to be laying there in the discomfort and the pain. <laughs> Don't touch me there, <laughs> the lady trainer. That. That's where it hurts. But he's got to be wondering what where his luck is as far as the injuries are uh, concerned this season. Darnell King has gone into the book for that. His second yellow card in uh, the first four games. For Lancaster, talk about a guy who's just simply unlucky. I mean, he, he ruptured his ACL in his right knee in March 2015. Scores against OCB in the second game of the season for Louisville. Leaves in the first half hour. And now he's still holding that arm rather tenderly. And, and of course, because the yellow card was issued, he's able to stay in the game despite having the trainer come on to look at him. So he's going to give this a go. Well, sometimes you get the injury bug, and that can be the difference between you making it at, at the professional level and having the chance, making it at the MLS level. You get those opportunities, but the, MLS, the, the injury just takes you out of the picture. And Lancaster puts it towards the top and uh, he was aiming for the corner ultimately that off a three man wall and not the best effort there we haven't seen many well taken free kicks tonight well, certainly not as far as the shooting efforts on going everyone has hit the the wall that's been set in front of them Spencer double teamed somehow trying to keep his feet goes into King who had both feet still on the ball King did wonderfully well to get that one under control and find a way to clear the lines for Tampa Bay. You can see Darwin Jones, top of your screen, former Seattle Sounders two player waiting to come in. And there he is, Darwin Jones, 25 year old out of Chicago, Illinois. First year with Tampa Bay, replaces Martin Vingard. And this is the first time Vingard has come off in uh, now the fourth game of the season. Played the full 270. Hasn't really been a factor in this match, but in fairness to him, I don't think that the middle part of the park has really been a factor for either team. Mm -hmm. At least not defensively, no. 
goal kick coming is well won on that far touch line. You haven't seen Williams or Del Piccolo really create on the Louisville side for, for Tampa Bay Rowdies. They play that same 4 2 3 1. Lifted into the air by Morad. He didn't think Dobrovolsky was going to get there in time, so he concedes the corner before that ball could uh, get knocked towards the net by Brown. A uh, good play by the center back there for Louisville. Poor communication. You've got to make sure that that ball goes out of the danger area, and Morad did exactly that. And Speedy Williams is looking for a substitute now. Park is littered now. And bodies just hitting the floor all over the place. The athletic training staff have been pretty busy for both teams this evening. And you look forward for this Louisville Tampa couple of teams. Louisville plays next on Saturday at Nippert Stadium, so they get a few days off. And Tampa. It's going to be playing at Nippert Stadium on ESPN 3 on Wednesday night as James O'Connor will go to his bench. Guy Bend is looking to come in in favor of uh, Speedy Williams. He knew as soon as he went to the ground that he was looking to uh, come off. Uh, players, they don't, don't know what the deal is, whether they can keep going or not. Some do. <laughs> That's, he certainly did. So it's going to be interesting now that you've got two central midfielders and we've talked about how the central midfield hasn't really been a factor going forwards for either team so far this evening. It's going to be interesting to see how these two substitutions affect both squads as this match progresses. The bend going right into the mixer. Both teams have used two substitutes now. Can Tampa Bay level the playing field in the 68th minute? on this ensuing corner kick. This has been a heated verbal game just as much as it has been physical. Well, Bend has just come in and he's already getting into the bad books for the <laughs> referee. <laughs> sure looks like he's, he's saying no more, no moss. Corner for the Rowdies. Out swinger. That headed away from Christoff. That could have been dangerous. King plays the corner again. Brown header over. Wasn't able to snap that down. He's backtracking a little bit so he could meet the flight of the ball. Wasn't able to get any purchase on the header and put it on target. Darwin Jones for Tampa Bay, spreading the ball wide, and then the cross coming in. Brown wasn't able to put it on frame. Tampa Bay conceding for the first time in USL tonight. Ball for McCabe from Lancaster, cleared away. And taken by Darwin Jones. 22nd minute, third goal of the year for Davis. Louisville City, a 1-0 lead as they try and keep their unbeaten start going through four games. A cave, that's clever. That isn't. No. <laughs> Aim for Spencer. Play continues. Brown through ball, left-hand side, looking for service. Dobrovolsky got there just in time. Good goalkeeping, Dobrovalski bravely down at the feet. In the end, it was bravely down at the feet of his own defender, Morad. Ball played out beautifully there to the flank. Bodon on the cross, didn't pull it out far enough. Wasn't able to find the feet of his attacking players. Christoph was lurking. In the end, it was the goalkeeper able to make the save down quickly to his left. When isn't Christoph lurking? Such a goal scorer for Tampa Bay, such a good servant for the club. And uh, again, arguing the point. And the referee's had enough, his uh, several fouls, and so Ristoff goes into the book. 
Stuart Campbell was with the team when he first trialed. They saw him in one training session and knew he had to be theirs. Offered, a, offered him a contract before he could get away. Smart decision by the staff at Tampa Bay and what a servant he's been for the squad. Georgie Hristoff, what a tremendous player he's been for the Rowdies. In this case, a 71st minute yellow card. A game that seems destined for everybody to get in the book. Free kick for Louisville City. Gets through. What a save on the line by Pickens. Was it Lancaster who got the last touch? Attack still on for Louisville. It breaks down now. I don't know who it was who got the last touch, but Tampa Bay was struggling there. There were two players open at the back post, and it ball didn't fall to them. It was headed before it even got to that area of the pitch. But what a fantastic save to Pickens. What injury. He looks just fine. The guy got down so quickly to his left. That's a, probably one of the hardest saves in the book because you just have to let your feet go out from underneath you and drop down almost in your own shadow, so to speak. Pickens did a fantastic job to put that one out of the danger area. Save Tampa Bay from going down 2-0. And now the Rowdies trying to turn things the other way. Lancaster, and that's taken out. Ball comes in. You see two players open. It actually was off of his own play. Collins, Collins I think. Mm -hmm. But what a fantastic save. Beautifully down. Snap save there by the goalkeeper. Meanwhile, Darwin Jones, the Coopers, the heartbeat of the stadium now. You can hear those drums pounding. Not a great touch. Stays with Schaefer. Tries the right. King up the line. Darwin Jones. Fresh legs. Low service. Del Piccolo. That header still dangerous. Fired across looking for Brown from King. Post did very well on that clearing header. Backtracking towards his goal, flicks it out. Here's another look at the opportunity. It was off the head of Collins. Look at how quickly Pickens got down to his left. Just swept that left foot out from underneath him so he could fo basically fall down into his own shadow to put that one out. Fine save from the big goalkeeper from the Rowdies and you hear the bigger they are the harder they fall but I think that's probably an easier save for Fitzgerald than it is for Pickens at 5-9 versus 6-3 it's a lot of distance to, to cover <laughs> I say it's the goalkeeper when you're making a diving save Mike you have a, a power step so you're forcing yourself and, and mm -hmm. spreading yourself and, and covering some that covering some that uh, ground in that situation, he, he wasn't going anywhere. He just had to go straight down and still get the power on the hands to push that ball around and outside of the post. And he, just a fine example of that area of the skill for from the big goalkeeper. First appearance of the year for Ilya Illich and Luke Spencer, who's been playing on a yellow card since first half stoppage time, is done. So we will not see Sean Reynolds or Paco Craig or Richard Ballard all of whom will see their night end on the bench. And Ilya Illich gets his first burn of the year. Spencer, the uh, the, the game, the, the go-ahead uh, assist here tonight. Uh, since he's come into the lineup when Lancaster went down injured against OCB, Spencer has done a really fine job, and he's going to be very happy with his job of work this evening. Held the ball up as a center forward position. Beautiful pass to Davis to put the ball in the back of the net. Jimenez made that dangerous. Jimenez trailing back and Darwin Jones chasing him down. About a quarter of an hour to go and what uh, I think was billed coming into this week is best game in the USL in week number four. Well, it hasn't disappointed. I don't think it's been the best played game that there has ever been in the USL, but 
there's certainly been plenty of incident and plenty of chances so i think the fans both uh, rowdy and louisville and neutral can all be pretty happy with what they've seen tonight i'd pay to watch it again i think that's that's the the end goal of course there could be more fireworks left davis breaking free lancaster against low turns the jets on again contact no whistle Tampa Bay wins the ball away cleanly and Matt you you agreed with the official on the outset well it looked like it the Lancaster just got pushed off the ball there and I think the, the positioning of the backs for the Rowdies was pretty good love to see it back on read it play to make sure that I'm right and the referee was right in his decision <laughs> but it doesn't matter the referee's the one that counts and there was no call Davis McCabe down the center plays service popped in the air by King corner kick Louisville City Louisville so dangerous on the counter attack Bowden, the left fullback for Tampa Bay, caught in possession. Davis slots the ball up the pitch, almost finds Lancaster, and then a huge talking point. As you see, James O'Connor still talking to the fourth official, wondering why there was no penalty or free kick given. Poor Johan Podolski, the fourth official. Served in for Louisville. Bounce out. McCabe turns up over the bar. One of those frustrating efforts for McKay. First touch wasn't quite good enough for the shot. And then as the ball got away from him, it just wouldn't fall kindly for him to get that one on target. We talked about him earlier in this second half, taking too many touches on the ball, perhaps not having the confidence coming back from the injury, but he showed that he certainly has the confidence now. Here comes Louisville City. Lancaster trying to alter his run. Ilyich still coming. Kicked away by Pickens. Chance off his line. Davis. Low really had to get up for that. Pickens got back to his line very quickly and Lowe was positioned beautifully as well. I don't think Davis put anything like the elevation on the ball that he was trying to do so. Not what we saw from uh, Steven Dos Santos uh, earlier today, or, or Davi Villa last night. Try to lob the keeper from way, way, way away. Well, the one from this, this afternoon was crazy. It was all the way from the halfway line, and you have to believe that the player saw the goalkeeper cheating off of his line, but when you look at it in the run of play, it just looks like his head's down, and he just hits it in the general direction of the the penalty box and it ends up going in the back of the net. There's the last substitution for Tampa Bay Rowdies. Mark Patterson comes on. He's got a laundry list of, of prior teams. Join the Rowdies prior to this year. Stoke City, Burnley, Blackpool, Port Vale, Orlando City. And for Northern Ireland, 23 caps and a trio of goals comes on for Michael Nanchoff. Patterson's first appearance of the year for, for the Rowdies. As far as coastal cities are concerned, I think you'd take Tampa Bay over Blackpool any day of the week. <laughs> you don't say. It's a lovely sandy beach, but it's about four or five hundred yards wide when the tide goes out. <laughs> Fans, tonight's attendance is 9,074. Needless to say, it's not particularly warm either. <laughs> Terrific attendance for Louisville City tonight for this blackout. Ilyich trying to chop that back across. Corner kick for Louisville. What a tremendous evening for Slaughter Field and these Louisville City fans. Attendance tonight just incredible. That is tremendous coming off a week where they announce renderings for their new stadium in Butchertown. 10,000 seat stadium that would be packed to the gills tonight if this crowd had been there.
Jimenez. That ball was moving as he hit it. It looked like it rolled off the tee that he put it on. Brown. Lifted long left side. Brown gets by Dobrovolsky. He's off his line, curls it across. He did keep it in play, which was maybe the most important element of that cross. Well, Dobrovolsky went out to try and claim it. You make the decision as a goalkeeper, you better get there. He didn't. Good job from Brown of the Rowdies to find the possession of the ball. But just the heartbeat got a little racing of too much. All he, he had to do was serve it into the penalty area and let his teammates put the ball in the back of the net for him. And he was trying to do too much on his own. Brown's got some kind of pace. Yes, he does. He's very fleet of foot up top. Love to see him find a way to maybe get out wide a little bit from his central role and isolate himself. It's not really what he's paid to do as the center forward, but somehow, somewhere, you have to find a way to influence the game from that position. He hasn't really had consistent service to feet that he would normally enjoy. Kang. Rowdy's first road game in the USL. Couldn't have picked a tougher place to play than a Louisville slugger field packed with 9,000 purple clad fans. Cross towards Brown. Darwin Jones settles, fires just wide of the post. The referee's indicating that that ball was deflected on the way to the target and it's out for a corner kick. First shot coming in from Jones, and it must have been touched there by was that Morad going to ground. There's the cross. It's loose. It's off the post. Did it not go in? Played back into the box. The turn. Not that time for Bowden. How did that stay out? Cole, again, aimed for Brown. Knocked away by Lancaster. And now the foot race. Back pass. Davis coming and Pickens clears it. Well, wow. You talked about Coach Campbell saying that in order to get a 1-0 victory, you have to have the luck to keep the ball out of the back of the net, have the luck to score, and have the luck to win the three points at the end of the day. And at the moment, he's wondering where his luck has gone. And uh, they called, uh, I believe it was uh, Abdul Salam from Sporting Kansas City who hit both posts against Portland, and they called a double post gum and a TIFO a little bit later. That. That may have knocked off of both posts on the way through. That was really remarkable. Well, there's two opportunities that the Rowdies have had, none of which the goalkeeper Dobrovalski for Louisville knew much about. Somehow, some way, the Rowdies still don't have a, anything on their side of the score ledger. Here comes Jones. Service deflected. King. Jones opens himself again. Serves it across the face of goal. Looking for the bicycle kick flip. Also looking for a handball, neither given. It was Joe Cole who was looking to do something special there. Play stays on. This is offside for Cole. Wow, this game has ratcheted up something special here lately. I love what I'm seeing from Darwin Jones on this near sideline. Every time he gets the ball to his feet, he's looking to isolate himself and go 1v1 against Jimenez. So far, Jones is having the run of play on this right flank. Doesn't have much more time to influence the match, but what he's done so far has really been pretty special and making a statement for himself to try and get into the starting lineup and get more playing time. Right wing, Davis turns it's too early to go into neutral that pass leaks into the 18 backstopped by Tosh Del Piccolo spins to ground we look back at that shot that was nearly it for Tampa well, the ball comes in from the corner kick initially headed and I'm not sure who it was for the Rowdies that took the shot there and 
Brown. Lowe was lurking as well. Any touch from him, the ball goes into the back of the net. That ball certainly hit off the inside of the post and somehow, some way, and he says Brown that took the shot, it didn't go in. It bounced back out. And Louisville getting the rub of the green this evening. Such a wonderful night here in front of 9,000 plus at Slugger Field, Tampa Bay. Really getting a taste of a road atmosphere in the USL. And Louisville City being given all they can handle by the team at the top of the Eastern Conference standings at the opening of this week. And with due reason, the Rowdies have dominated the first three weeks of the season. They've been the story. Will they fall from the ranks of the unbeaten? Will they be handed their first defeat? Looks like the Rowdies have gone with two up top. Louisville a chance. Cheeky, it's in. Lancaster off the bench. Two goals to nil. Louisville City in the driver's seat. I think his hammy is just fine. <laughs> What a beautifully finished goal. I was looking at the lineup for the Rowdies, thinking they'd gone two up top to try and find a way back into the match. But that clearance over the top, collected beautifully. Goalkeeper Pickens comes out, and he was picked clean by Lancaster as he chips it over the six foot three frame of the Rowdies goalkeeper. And what a calm finish from Cameron Lancaster. Beautifully done. Look at the collection with his left foot, just takes it away from Collins. Collins gives up, he knows he's beat. Goalkeeper comes out, he can't get there and close the angle quickly enough. Gets caught in no man's land and then just beautifully chipped over by number nine. Lancaster, that, that is some kind of cheeky finish. His second goal of the year. They both have been pretty special. The one against OCB was a, a really nice long distance shot snapshot from outside the box and that one in a different way was equally as good King wouldn't be counting the rowdies out of this one just yet looks dire headed back to Brown left footed shot that's deflected been a little desperate in the back line for Louisville at times but when it's mattered they've thrown their bodies in front of the shooting efforts from the Rowdies and managed to find a way to get the ball clear and come to think of it Lancaster there on your screen the guy who um, came in with fresh legs as this lifted chested down cleared away again and he, he took advantage of Spencer running this entire Rowdy's defense ragged as Brown plays it across. And there's a goal for Rowdy's. They've got one, two to one. And the goal is from Patterson. It's his first as a Rowdy. They've been playing that ball across the back line from the strong side to the weak side early all game. And Brown there just able to put it back across the goal. A fantastic job. And coaches always say, Mike, the 2 0 lead is always the most dangerous one in soccer, and the Rowdies able to cut the lead in half. What was that we were just saying? Don't count the Rowdies out yet? Absolutely not. Tampa Bay finally gets on the board. No time to waste. There were four minutes of stoppage time in the first half. If there's that much in the second half, uh, pacemakers are going to be going crazy in Slugger Field by the time we're done. Well, there hasn't been the injuries in the second half that we had in the first, but there has been some stoppages with substitutions. And they're saying on the field now, there's going to be four minutes again. My goodness. Pickens kicks it away from Illich. Like the Manchester United length of game, the uh, <laughs> compulsory four minutes of added time at the uh, the end of the 90. I think you're comparing James O'Connor to Sir Alex Ferguson, right? Is that the compare? No. Well, it depends. It's, it's actually <laughs> Stuart Gamble that's chasing the game. So. 
Four minutes of added time. Get your popcorn ready. This could be a special finish. In a, in a week in the USL that's been chock full of them. Lancaster goes to ground. Collins run over. It was Lancaster there, rather, who annihilated Collins. You almost wish they'd have 10 minutes of extra time. This one really fun, fun match. Illich. Lancaster scored what now looks like a game winning goal if Louisville City can keep it. He's heading to the corner flag. See if he can get some seconds off the clock. His touch lets him down. Goal kick to the Rowdies. He doesn't seem to think so. Martin Patterson scoring in the 89th. Right after Lancaster had scored in the 87th to give Louisville City a two goal lead. They have held the lead since the 22nd minute when George Davis scored his third of the season. Del Piccolo. McCabe tries to take on King. King and Lowell both uh, overran the ball momentarily. That's a good job by McCabe there because the ball could have been played up this near sideline to Jones, but McCabe recovered his position defensively to take that pass away. And you almost wish Tampa Bay would follow what they had mentioned before the game a little more patient. Maybe they can be here. Jones, Cole, through. That got touched at the worst moment by Christoph. Dobrovolsky off his line to keep it away from Brown, and Dobrovolsky falls in this final minute and a half of stoppage time. Well, the pattern of play that the Rowdies have had with that long ball diagonally over the top that they've tried so often in this game, I don't really think serves Deshaun Brown very well because I don't believe he's that kind of player as a center forward that will hold those balls up and win those balls in the air. I think he's a better player either played into space or the ball to his feet. And a little unlucky now that the, the game sort of dictates that you won't find that space back there. Certainly not. You know, Louisville putting as many players as they can behind the ball. You don't say. Nodded out by Tosh. Final minute of stoppage time. Does Tampa Bay have something special here to keep their unbeaten start in the USL alive? Or will Louisville City walk away with the full three-point allotment? Hard-earned victory at home. Both teams' next games coming up at Nippert Stadium against FC Cincinnati, who clubbed St. Louis tonight. Ball into the box. Open header, and it's lofted over. That could have been the moment. It was Collins. Well, Collins gave up the throw in to King. I thought King coming a long way would probably have a longer throw, and he chose to go short. The service was good. The header from Collins wasn't on target. And the big center back from Tampa Bay would want that one back. Full time. Louisville exuberant. 9,000 plus fans ecstatic. And what a 2-1 win it was for Louisville. Tampa Bay taste defeat. Stuart Campbell in the USL for the first time. And what a game this was, top to bottom. Incidents all over the pitch. Incidents in, in the penalty areas, both ends of the, the park for both teams. And some really nice goals that we've seen scored this evening. And uh, a, just a tremendous game for both squads. But I think Louisville at the end Obviously, they did enough to win it, but I think that they were the just winners in the end because they they put the, the passes together when they needed to. Tampa Bay, they've got to find some answers and, and find a way of finding each other a little bit more consistently on the uh, from the back line to the midfield and then to the forwards to continue their success. Patterson tightened it in the 89th, but Davis in the 22nd, Lancaster in the 87th. 
Louisville City, four games unbeaten to start the year. They've taken away now 10 points through four games. James O'Connor and his group, so pleased. We hope you've enjoyed this one as much as we have. We've got highlights and stats in moments as Louisville City at home defends Slugger Field in front of a terrific crowd, knocking Tampa Bay out of the ranks of the perfect. Final score from Slugger Field, Louisville City 2, Tampa Bay 1.